um, nothing to do with llamas, but talking about adversity uh, shows your true colors. It has to be said that when the Tibetans first came out, and they were very poor, and many of them, including llamas, some were working on the roads, and they were in this very alien uh, country with alien traditions, alien climate, alien food, alien language, and they had just gone through so much trauma to get here in the first place and watched everything which they held most precious destroyed before their eyes. And yet when they came and they were here, the thing which struck everyone who met them was not that they were bitter and angry and, and, and grieving and sad, but how extremely cheerful they were. And, and friendly and generous and um, just full of, of, of faith and just, you know, you would think that they were, you know, the happiest people on earth. And this is what I think at the beginning, I mean, less now because the Tibetans have become, you know, professional refugees and now they're wealthier than everybody around them. Um, but in those days when they truly were in penury, and living in tents and, uh, you know, eating, you know, dog swill. Their, their resilience and their, their, their inner joy and, and their, their goodness struck everyone, especially people who were professional workers for refugees because they'd never seen anything like it. And I think this is what captured people's hearts in the beginning, was these were refugees with a difference. Yeah. It's interesting. So it was even um, um, at the general populace level, you're saying, you know, not just no, not, not just, just the Dharma llamas. practitioners, no, just no, uh, everybody, culturally. you know, and presumably because they had Dharma in their hearts. And of course, as soon as they could get themselves a little bit together, the first thing they tried to do was to start up the uh, monasteries again. And in those days, there was no um, advantage in being a monk because the monks were living extremely poorly and, and uh, you know, really outwardly suffering a lot. Um, and, and that, again, drew to them people who <coughs> really wanted to be monks because of their inner conviction and not just because it was an easy life. Yeah, Khandra Rinpoche had told me of... Um a number of the monks that made the escape with her father um, you know, eventually ended up hanging up their robes just in order to try and make ends meet and, you know, to live. Um, yeah, personally, I've never really thought of being a monk as, you know, a glamour you know, <laughs> job. Mm -hmm. But things are clearly different these days than um, being certifiable refugees that, you know, just either escaped or witnessed genocide. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was very, um, you have to hand the Tibetans that, that in the beginning when they, everything was so very, very difficult, uh, they were splendid, really. The, in, in some ways, they're better in adversity than they are in uh, quantity, you know. They're... But the Lamas also, you know, were in those days very simple and very, as I say, very egalitarian. I mean, except for the very, very highest, everybody was going around on local transport and, and just living in a very, very simple way and um, managing beautifully. You know, always very friendly and cheerful and very happy if anyone was interested in the Dharma. And uh, in many ways, those were the best days. <laughs> 